Why, why do our people say that a lot? Oh, that's the Old Testament. That's done away with. Who told us that? No. Man, where they say it come from? Paul. That what they, that's what that's what that our people misunderstand Paul's writings. And that's where that that's where that doctrine come from. Right? I'm gonna show you. Let's let's see what Paul said in the New Testament. This after the death and resurrection of Christ. And who did Paul learn from? Christ. Right? Watch this. Read that. Acts chapter 24, verse 14. Because Paul was accused of the same thing that we accusing him of this day, saying we ain't got to keep the law. But guess what he said in his defense, right? Watch this, read. But this I confess unto thee, uh -huh. that after the way which they call heresy. Because Paul was accused of heresy, right? Watch this, read. So worship I the God of my fathers. So Paul said, I worship the God of my fathers. Paul wasn't, Paul is an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, right? Read. Believing all things. Believing what? All things. Believing what? All things. Women not wearing pants. Men not wearing dresses, read. Believing all things which are written in the law. You see that? So is God's laws done away with? No. Is the Old Testament done away with? No. The only thing that Christ did away with was sacrifice in the law of sin and death, right? So now, because so, it was, give me Acts 13 and, uh, what's that, 30? 38, give me Acts 13 and 38. This is what Christ came to do. Watch this. Uh, watch this. You got that? Acts 13 and 38. Watch this. Read. Acts chapter 13, verse 38. Uh -huh. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Right? And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Right, because the law of Moses was sacrificed. And sometimes you was the sacrifice. Right? So if, if, if a man or woman got caught in the midst of adultery, what happened to them during the time of Moses? They was killed. They got, they got put to death. But under Christ, we can repent. Under Christ, we can get forgiven. You understand? That's the difference. That's what Christ came to do. Teach us how to overcome sin. Because give me that in, um, give me that in Hebrews chapter 10. Christ came to teach us how to overcome sin because sacrifice wasn't teaching us how to stop sinning. Right? You understand? What's the way? The Bible say the way to the sin is death. Y'all know what sin is? Hold on, give me, watch this, hold that. Give me Romans chapter 6 and 23, and then give me 1 John 3 and 4. I'm going to show y'all something real quick. Then we're going to dive into something while y'all here. Watch this, read. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Uh -huh. For the wages of sin is death, uh -huh. but the gift of God is eternal life. That's why our people dying left and right because of sin. Our people get shot down in the streets. Another black man kill another black man. Black woman kill a black man, black man kill a black woman, so on and so forth. Sin led up to that. Right? right? It just is what it is. Now give me first John 3 and 4. What is sin? Do you know? All right, we're gonna read, we're gonna read what it is. These this all watch this, read it. First John chapter 3, verse 4. This right. all in the New Testament. Right? So the wages of sin is death, right? Black lives matter to you. So do black lives matter to you? Yes. Okay. So, because we the ones dying out here, right? That's why our people say black lives matter, because we the ones that's getting killed out here, right. right? So if black lives matter to you and the wages of sin is death, what should we stop doing? Stop sinning. No, it's that plain. Well, watch this. Read. First John chapter 3, verse 4. What is sin? Read. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For the sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is breaking God's laws. That's the definition of sin. Right. Now give me verse 8. Verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. So if you break God's laws, you are of the devil. So should we keep God's laws or should we break them? We got to keep them. So, should you put on a dress? Yes or no? 
All praises to the most high. Now give me 1 Corinthians chapter, nope, give me Hebrews 13 and 4. Are y'all married? Okay, all praises. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11. How long y'all been married? Four years. I pray. That's a beautiful thing. So, in a marriage, according to God, is marriage 50-50? No? What is it? All praises. All praises to the most high. We're going to get that in the Bible. Watch this. Read. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Uh -huh. And the head of Christ is God. Right. You see that? So jump down to verse uh, 8. So the head of the woman is the man. Right? And the head of Christ or the head of man is Christ. Christ is your head. Your husband is your head. So can you get to the kingdom without him? No. All praise. There you go. See? That's what I like to hear right there. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to get a commandment for you. We just we just got on the system. I'm going to get a commandment for you. Keep reading. Stay where we use that. Keep reading. Every man praying or prophesying. So right now we in the midst of prophecy. Right? We read. We talking about the Bible. We in the midst of prophecy. Watch this. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So who was your head? Christ. So if we in the midst of prophecy and your head is covered, you dishonor Christ. So what should you do right now as a follower of Christ? What you going to do? I'll pray. There you go. See, it's that simple, man. It's not hard to do what the Bible says. The Lord gave us straight commandment. He, he, he gave us plain commandments. You understand? Now give me Exodus chapter 20 because... All right, we're going to keep reading. Watch this. Read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. So your head should be covered when the scriptures are coming out. Because then when, you, when, when it's not, who you dishonoring? No. Who's your head? You're him, right. That's your head, right? That's that's your God. Do, do you understand that? There you there you go. All praises. See, this is what this is what we haven't been taught, and this is why our households are out of order. You understand? That's the, the foundation starts with the marriage. That's where a nation starts. This was the first attack, the marriage. That's who Satan attacked first, the marriage between the black man and the black woman. You understand? He got the black woman to go against the black man. He got the, got the black woman to try to be equal to the black man. And that's not what it's supposed to be. The man the head, we call the shot. You understand? What was I finna go? Exodus chapter. So... What we show in our people is nation building, right? The Lord is gathering together his people in these last days. You understand? And this is where it started, right? I'm going to show you. Exodus 20 and 8. Cause y have y'all heard, heard of us before? Y'all ain't never heard of us before? Y'all go to church? Y'all just moved back here? Tennessee? But was y'all going to church? Now, denomination, that is a denomination. <laughs> That's a denomination. It is, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But what day was y'all going to church on? Sunday. Where that come from? You were going on Sunday. Where that come from? Is that biblical? No. So who it come from? Right there. That's where it came from. The devil. That's where it came from. The white man, the devil. Y'all agree? He the damn devil. It is what it is. But watch this. Exodus 20 and 8. Read that. Exodus chapter 20 and verse. Because for somebody to open the Bible, I'm going to read this and uh, I'm going to let y'all go. But for somebody to open the Bible and read what it says, right? But tell you something different. That's the devil. You know what I'm saying? They said, Jesus looked like this, but he really looked like that, 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. Right. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So the seventh day is the Sabbath, right? What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. The first day of the week is on any calendar. The first day of the week is Sunday, right? What's the seventh day of the week? Saturday, right? Watch this, read. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. You see that? The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, right? Watch this, read. In it thou shalt not do any work. So we're not supposed to work on a Sabbath day. We're not supposed to be cooking or cleaning or, 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 or buying or selling on a Sabbath day. We read this in the scriptures. You understand? So we got to keep the Sabbath day. The Lord said that's a perpetual covenant that he made with us. You understand? You know how important the Sabbath day is? No matter what happened to us, no matter what nation we was led captive to, guess what brought us together? The Sabbath day. That's how our nation starts to get rebuilt, by keeping the Sabbath day. Every last brother out here, nine times out of ten, met on the Sabbath day. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is restoring his people. And you got to come around like-minded brothers and sisters, and it's going to start with the Sabbath day. You know what I'm saying? Like my brother was bringing out earlier. If you're around people that ain't keeping the Sabbath, Sabbath day, they're not keeping no commandments. Right? Y'all, hey, call us. Come to the school. How y'all doing, young brothers? What's going on? What's your name, fam? Markel, what's your name, young brother? Xavier? All right. Let me ask y'all a question. What color is Jesus Christ? Is he a white man or a black man? You don't care. Why not? You said what? That's not your prophet. Who your prophet? You don't have one. What? Oh, okay. So where is this coming from? Where did it come from though? You ain't just make it up. So you made that up. But where did it come from? Where did that perspective come from? Because our people like to think that we got our own thoughts. We don't. Everything we say, we regurgitating what somebody else said. Our thoughts came from somewhere, so something made you think that way. So just be honest with me. What did, what make you think that way? Nothing. So you just you, know, you just woke up and said and said Jesus ain't your prophet. Let me give me Revelation one and fourteen, because those thoughts really came from this man right here. Anything outside of what this Bible say, because what our what our people need to understand is you either worshiping God or you worshiping the white man. That's what it is. All your curriculum that you learn from the time you was in preschool or whatever, it came from the white man. That's right. Everything you, you got said in front of a TV when you was a baby, that came from the white man. Right. Everything that you've been indoctrinated with from the time you was born, it came from the white man. Yeah. So you ain't got your own thoughts, bro. You may think that's the case or you may like to think that's the case, but it's not. You either worshiping God or you worshiping your oppressor, yeah. right? But watch this. Read that. Revelation 1 and 14. Let's see what Jesus Christ, the most important man on the face of the earth, looked like. Because everybody's perspective of God comes from the Bible, whether we want to admit it or not. But right. well, watch this. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Right. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So what you say your name was, Xavier? Where does wool come from? A sheep. Right. It's plain, right? So do his hair look like a sheep? Or do his hair look like a sheep, sheep hair? The one on the left? All right, that's strike one. Right? What we got right here? There we go right there. You see? That's wool. You understand? The wool, wooly texture, that's an afro. You understand? If you took your hair down, you're going to have an afro. Likewise, my brother right here. Right? Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. Right. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Right. So it said his eyes was as a flame of fire. Why? Because Christ drank wine in moderation. His first miracle 
he turned water into wine, right? He didn't have blue eyes like we've been taught, right? Watch this, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. So what color is brass? The metal, the metal brass. What color is it? It's brown. It ain't like brown, it is brown, right? Watch this, read. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So if you burn anything, what color do it turn? It turned black. Right. So what color was right. Jesus? He was black. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that they lied to you about what he looked like, it got to be some significance to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? If somebody lied to you about something, that means it's true. It's truth that they hiding. They hiding some truth. So this man had to have existed if they lied about what he looked like. Right. That's just coming sense you understand and this is what we got to teach our people this is what our young men got to understand because without knowing without any kind of identity or something to uh, uh cleave to and identify with that's why we join games that's why we do drugs you know what i'm saying that's why we indulge in all type of other things that we're not supposed to indulge in because we don't have anything to identify with but when we find out god look like me when you find out God look like you, that should change your mindset. That should change the way that you look at your brother. That should change the way that you look at your sister. That look just like you. You understand what I'm saying? Give me um, Jeremiah chapter 17 and 4. Because this is what the white man has done to us. He stripped us of our God. He stripped us of our identity. To the point where you're talking about Jesus ain't your prophet. Right? To the point where you where you where you saying things you don't even know you don't even know what you saying. That's right. You just regurgitating something. You 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 want to sound deep. You want to sound like you know something somebody else don't. That's how our people is today. But the Lord said we gotta speak the same thing. Because if I ask you your nationality, and if I ask him his nationality, and if I ask another brother his nationality, I'm gonna get three different answers nine times out of ten. But you know what bring us together? You know what unifies us? This Bible. That's the only thing that's going to do it. Watch this. Read. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Read. Read. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So what people on the earth discontinue from their heritage? Who the only people on the face of the earth that got somebody else's last name and somebody else's land speaking somebody else's language? Who? Is the white man? Does the white man identify with that? No. Do the Arab man identify with that? No. They can go back to their homeland at any time. Right? But you, you got somebody else's last name and you got three forms of identity, identification to show that. Right? Hold on. I'm going to give you one more scripture before we rock out. Give me um, Zechariah 11 and 4. I'm going to show you what we commanded to do. And I'm going to show you something within the scripture to, 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 to back up my point that I just made, right? Watch this, read. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 4. Oh, yeah. Thus saith the Lord, my God, feed the flock of the slaughter. This is how we got discontinued from our heritage, through slavery. You know what I'm saying? They said, if you don't worship this image, we're going to kill you. If you don't put this cross on your neck, we're going to kill you. That's how we got disconnected from our heritage, through slaughter. But God commanded us to come out and feed the flock of the slaughter. Ain't we dying every day? Ain't the ambulance in our neighborhood every damn day? Ain't it yellow tape and police in our neighborhoods every day? We the ones dying out here in these streets, right? Watch this, read. Feed the flock of the slaughter. We got to feed our people with truth and knowledge. We got to feed our people with the commandments of God. That's the only way we going to grow. Watch this, read. Whose possessors slay them. Whose possessors slay them. That means someone owns you. And you got three forms of identity to change that. But you can take it back. You can take your identity back. You can take your name back. But you got to get around real men. You ain't around real men. I know you ain't around real men. You understand? Because of what you just told me. You understand? You ain't around no real men, young brother. These men out here in purple and gold, these real men. Taking care of their communities, taking care of their wives and children, right. raising their sons up to be warriors. Right. You understand? 
We the gods of this earth. And our young men gotta wake up. And it's our job to do it. Nation is men leading by example. 